So, they will move on to the, the another modification. So, we looked at pulsed the square wave DC, okay. So, we looked at uh, the variable polarity uh, DC and then we were looking at the in the last case the, the, the cold and hot wire uh, GTAW. So, now we will move on to the another interesting modification we have done GTAW and which is uh, commercially used extensively is uh, plasma, right. So, recall, so why we are not calling a plasma welding as an arc welding or arc welding as a plasma welding because they are two different entity, okay. So, when I taught you the physics of arc, the plasma is a state, is not it? So, it, it is said that arc becomes plasma when the arc becomes electrically neutral, okay. So, you need to achieve a condition such a way that the kinetic energy of all the energy carriers be it an electron or ion must be the same, okay. But in arc we do not reach that state, okay. So, you need to do some trick to make or to convert arc into plasma, right. So, that means that you know uh, uh, we need to increase the, the charge carriers density in the arc in such a way that they become neutralized. Is it? Okay. So, the one way of doing it is uh, to we need to increase the arc temperature tremendously, right. So, we need to increase temperature tremendously so that we generate more, uh, more ions and we generate in that more electrons and they collide those generate the much more heat such a way that you, know, you neutralize the arc column. So, one way of uh, doing it, no, again, so you can increase the current keep on increasing it to maximum level. So, that is a disadvantage because then you will also increase the heat input, the amount of heat goes in. So, other way of doing it is we carefully manipulate the heat transfer characteristic of the arc, right. So, again the heat transfer in arc is carried out by three ways, right. How? What ways? Conduction, convection and radiation. So, conduction and radiation we cannot do anything, okay. So, we cannot modify anything, but we can manipulate the convective heat transfer. So, what are the two mechanisms by which convective heat transfer takes place? Buoyancy and plasma jet formation. So, what is buoyancy? How do you define buoyancy? Density difference. So, arc at the, at the middle of the arc. So, we have an higher temperature whereas in arc envelope we have low temperature and because of that we have a flow, okay. And similarly, in, in plasma jet formation, so what happens? In uh, uh, the heat is transferred by plasma jet formation due to the generation of Lorentz force, is not it? So, when uh, the, uh, the, the fundamental energy carrier for the particles, for example, electrons and ions, if they are coming closer, they repel each other, right. The closer they come, the more the force they generate in repelling action that is a Lorentz force fundamentals, right. So, we need to play around with these two phenomena, so that you now we can increase the, the plasma jet velocities. So, in that what you need to know, so now we need to bring these fundamental particles close to the center in such a way that, so we increase the plasma jet velocities. And by doing so, we can increase the arc core. The moment you increase the arc core, obviously, so, you also increase the temperature significantly throughout the arc and that can lead to plasma state, right. So, you can pump up the lot of current, but then that is not really practical. So, simply what we can do is, we can just cool the, the arc envelope at a given location. For example, if you have an, uh, the arc formed bell shaped arc, right. So, what we do is the trick is here. So, we will have an uh, additional gas coming at the, uh, see, at the half way between the electrode and base material when the arc is struck and then we cool a certain area at the envelope of the arc. 
So, by doing so what we are doing it is we are constricting the arc is not it. So, the arc envelope diameter decreases significantly. So, locally so we change the diameter of the arc is not it. That means that we create enormous amount of Lorentzian force because we are pushing the, the electrons and ions close to each other. So, when they are pushed close to each other what happens they will ripple with enormous amount of force is not it. So, obviously they are pushed along this direction they would tend to travel in other direction and because of increasing Lorentzian force by constricting the arc ok. So, or constricting the arc we increase the, the core diameter and the, the, the electrons are compressed that means that you increase the local electron density thereby you also produce more an ion and they collide each other and they neutralize and because the, the density is so narrowly placed and you reach the electrical neutrality yes it is clear. So, by just being a simple trick by cooling an arc by using an external shielding gas we can constrict the movement of uh, the electrons and ions. So, if you are constricting the movement obviously they collide each other they generate more ions and more electrons. So, then you can reach a state at which the arc plus the plasma is generated right. By doing so you create a, a, a so much of Lorentz force the plasma jet velocity increases tremendously is not it because you increase the Lorentzian force means that the plasma jet velocity is also increased. So, that means that without changing anything do not change any arc energy or do not change current and voltage by just using in a simple cooling mechanism we can increase the plasma jet formation velocities plasma jet formation and then velocities and by doing so we can achieve a very high penetration a very high <laughs> arc energy yes it is clear. So, the trick is very simple. So, we have an, a conventional uh, the, uh, TIG electrode tungsten electrode and uh, you send an, an, a, a shielding gas and then outer shielding gas and this is sent in such a way that we cool the, the arc envelope at a given location and that can lead to the arc constriction and moment arc, arc is constricted or, or, or shrunk and we pack the fundamental energy carriers like electrons and ions in a very narrow region and they would collide and interact generate much more heat for further ionization energy for further ionization and then uh, they can get neutralized. And during this process we also create uh, a much higher Lorentz force because now all the particles what are generated the fundamental particles they are generated they are all constricted to narrow envelope because of generous Lorentz force you increase the plasma jet velocity and that can lead to the formation of uh, plasma yes is clear. So, that is the purpose of DL gas GTAW and uh, yeah it is commonly used uh, to constrict the arc by constricting the arc we create uh, uh, enormous amount of uh, Lorentzian force leading to plasma jet velocity increased significantly right and due to that uh, we increase the arc core temperature and arc core becomes wider right. Generally argon is used as an, an, an a plasma gas ok. So, and then uh, yeah we can also use a somewhat cooler gas right argon 20 percent CO2 because we need to reduce the temperature right. So, the, the when it uh, ionizes it is not at least heat ok. So, the commonly used outer gas is argon 20 percent CO2. So, an inner gas we use argon 5 percent CO2 of 5 percent hydrogen or pure, pure argon. So, argon plus 5 percent again so it is also used to create more convective, but we are not allowing it to convect freely we are constricting that with an, uh, colder gas outside. So, that you know the, uh, the plasma jet can be formed and then transferred to the workpiece it is clear. So, how does this work and you can use it in an, uh, because of uh, 
uh, this modification, even a very small current we can generate a good amount of plasma. So, we will see in subsequent slides there are even in a micro amperage we can create a plasma. Okay, so, that is commonly used for uh, you know, welding of very thin sheets and uh, we can also get uh, uh, because of increased plasma jet formation what is you known as keyhole welding. Okay, so, again we will see in the subsequent slides uh, because if you have a very good pen penetration and we can also use it as a uh, for a keyhole welding. Okay, so, we will look at in detail in, uh, uh, in plasma welding where we use an, uh, two gases instead of one gas. So, one gas is the plasma gas, the other one is the, the cooling gas or outer gas and typically what we do is here. So, we have a plasma gas which is the, uh, the gas used for striking an arc or in this case plasma and then we use an, an another additional orifice so for example, in this case and this orifice passes the, the, uh, the constricting uh, gas. Generally, the, uh, this nozzle is cooled, otherwise this nozzle will heat up significantly. So, generally we use water cooled uh, copper nozzles to send the, the outer uh, constricting gas, so that now we can form a plasma jet upon the constriction, so you form a plasma jet. Okay. So, plasma jet once it forms, it is considered a power beam like a laser. So, you can have uh, uh, like a laser. So, you can have a neutral uh, uh, beam with a very high energy density, right. And then uh, we can also make advantage of this design, right. So, we have an, uh, another uh, entity coming in in, this, uh, in, in, in in the schematic, right. For example, in this case we use an water cooled copper right. So, in this water cooled copper anode, the, 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 it also can be made into an anode. So, we can strike an arc between the cathode and then this guy and the work piece can be independent, is not it. So, it will be like a handheld a beam, right. So, so, we can also make use of the another entity which is over here. If you make it an anode, we can strike an arc between this anode and the electrode tip, right? Or we can also strike an arc between the, the, the tungsten cathode and the workpiece, and both are advantageous. So why? Because we can create two short of uh, two types of uh, plasma. Okay, so in two mode, then this two mode we known as transferred arc mode or non-transferred arc mode, ok. So, we generate plasma by arc constriction and it can be done in two mode, in transferred arc mode or non-transferred arc mode. In non-transferred arc mode, we strike an arc between the tungsten cathode and then the water cooled copper nozzles which is used to construct the arc. Okay, that is also possible, right? To keep to make uh, the, the 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 copper uh, nozzles an anode, so we can strike an arc. Okay, so and then you can use that as an uh, uh, a heating medium. I'll tell. I'll show the videos. Or you can also convert once you make a non-transferred arc into a transferred arc. When you as long as you know you moment you go next to the work piece and it becomes uh, uh, transferred arc when you strike an arc between the cathode and the work piece. So, this arc is also known as pilot arc ok. So, th there are a lot of advantages having this right. So, why what advantage we can have for example, see so in, in a transferred arc is like a conventional arc. Okay, where you have a tungsten cathode and you have an, uh, the, the water cooled copper anode which is used to construct the arc, so that the arc becomes plasma, right. So, now you strike an arc between these work piece. So, now what happens if you remove the, the torch 
or goes away, isn't it? So then uh, there is not enough distance to strike an arc. So that means that the workpiece and the distance between the workpiece and the uh, the tagathode tip should have a defined length. Otherwise, you know, arc ignition is a problem, isn't it? So instead of doing this, so we can also manipulate this configuration such a way that so we do not strike an arc between the tungsten cathode and workpiece, we strike an arc between these two guys. Okay. So that means that we can independently move, right. So when you once you have a non transferred arc, which is also known as pilot arc, it is easy to do a lot of work. For example, if you have an, a, an a sort of an a mesh. Now, it is like in a window mesh for example and uh, you need to cut and then do on welding. So if you want to cut uh, this mesh, suppose if you are using an, uh, a conventional GTA torch and this is connected to uh, work the, the power source and your torch is connected to a power source and this can be positive and the torch can be negative and if you move along, the moment you go from here and you have an, an a cut, is not it? And once you cross this wire, obviously there is no contact, the arc will extinguish, is not it? And then again if you move over here, you may strike an arc. So in this case, the efficiency goes down significantly and every time you need to ignite and you need to extinguish the arc. So instead of doing that, you do not bring this into uh, contact in the picture. You strike an arc between the, the, the cathode and the, the, uh, the water cooled copper anode. So now your workpiece is independent of the, the system. Okay, so you always have a plasma, is not it? In a pilot arc, and then you can move it like any other gas welding. If you have oxidized in cylinder, you do not use an, an, a power source, right? You will have a gas bottle oxygen in bottle and then you have a uh, torch ignited and then you cut it. The same thing can be achieved here as well because the, the, the plasma is generated by non transferred arc by striking an uh, arc between the cathode and the, uh, the copper nozzles. So it, it will like an, any other uh, an, uh, gas cutting okay. and then you can also weld it simultaneously you cut it I want to weld some, some other plate here something like uh, you have a some shapes like this and you need to weld in a flat panel and then cut it out. So you can weld it right and then you can still keep the arc on and then you can go on and then again do it and simultaneously you can continue this process because you always have arc on and whenever it goes to a thicker sections and if you connect the thicker section to power source it becomes transferred arc. Otherwise, it becomes non transferred arc. Is clear? So, in a transferred arc, we strike an arc between the cathode and the workpiece. So we still use an electronegative, electrode positive, that is why it is known as anode, is not it? Okay, so, we always keep this is positive and this is positive. And in non transferred arc, workpiece is independent, is not it? So, workpiece is not connected to power source at all and the arc is struck between the cathode and the anode. Yes, it is clear. So this is very advan advantage in, in various cases because the plasma source that is why it is very commonly used for plasma cutting, is not it? So plasma cutting and welding, so if you have one single plasma source, we can use it for uh, both cutting operations and uh, uh, welding operations because of the fact that you have uh, uh, arc always on whether it is transferred arc, non transferred arc based on the need. Yes, it is clear. So, the pilot arc, what is pilot arc? The pilot arc is struck between the, the tungsten cathode and then the, the copper anode, and that is in your hand all the time. So, when you are using it, okay. So, when you are bringing it close to the, the workpiece, the pilot arc can be converted into transferred arc, right? And you can still 
if you want to weld it in uh, the advantage is the pilot torque the heat energy is much lower generally so we can also use it for welding thin sections it is like in a melting like gas welding oxygen welding right because the workpiece is never in contact in the circuit yes it's clear so i'll show you in video so it will be very clear for you guys suppose if you want to uh, as i explained you, you, you want to cut and then weld such a wire frames so now you can bring you can connect this also in electropositive to the power source and then so if you bring the the non transferred arc close to the uh, the, the mesh now in non transferred transferred non transferred transferred non transferred transferred okay so the arc is always there the plasma is always there so this kind of cutting applications is very handy and similarly you can also play around with the heat input when you are welding subsequently suppose you want to cut and then you need to uh, attach another sheet simultaneously so you cut it out and then use an a pilot arc to weld and then use an a transfer arc to cut and pilot arc to weld and sequentially you do it so it gives a lot of flexibility in terms of handling complex systems like this the mesh okay similarly you can also using a pilot arc you can reduce the heat input because pilot arc generally can be you know you can strike it even with 20 amps even less than that even a micro plasma can also be generated so is all is possible by only one trick what is the trick by constricting the arc okay so how did we arrive at this by understanding the physics of arc okay so we know that convective heat transfer is extremely important so if you manipulate the convective heat transfer we can increase the energy density okay so how do we do that we cool the arc envelope using a uh, gas nozzle so that we restrict the moment of electrons and ions only to the core and due to that the lorentz force increases significantly leading to formation of uh, neutral plasma and during this process lorentz force generated and this lorentz force uh, increasing lorentz force because of increasing number density of electrons constricted to a very narrow core you increase the plasma jet velocity and leading to a very high energy input to the material yes is clear good so what are the characteristics as i said we have two modes transfer arc mode and non transfer arc mode in transfer arc mode we can generate extremely high heat input okay so because of the plasma jet what we form by constricting the arc can have what do you know as a keyhole welding what is keyhole welding we'll see in subsequent slides so if you have a complete full penetration so we can achieve what is commonly used achieved in laser welding so the power density of the beam can be as good as uh, even higher than uh, some of the lasers uh, what we use okay so similar to uh, that's what you know as power beam welding in keyhole mode and in non transfer arc it is also very handy because work piece is never in the current circuit isn't it the the arc is struck between the the cathode and the uh, the copper anode so it is established in the work piece and it can be used for heating and spraying coating because so if you want to uh, do an electro uh, sorry if you want to have a cladding powder deposition you can use an a uh, uh, simple uh, powder and uh, yeah you can modify the the uh, torch the conventional heat torch into plasma torch so very simple only thing is you need to have uh, an a uh, constricting nozzle attached to that and uh, generally we use a slightly larger diameter of a tungsten electrode because the the energy density at the tip increases tremendously because of the arc constriction so the diameter of the tungsten electrode we use for plasma is much higher than use it for gtaw good I, yeah so you need to modify it is not that straight forward right so you need to have a, a proper cooling channels for the copper anode to made so you have an a uh, cathode and you have an a uh, constricting gas coming in and you have a plasma gas and you also have an uh, the additional shielding gas 
So, the other advantage over here is because you use the extra shielding here. So, the workpiece is protected even better compared to the conventional GTAW. Yes, it is clear? Good. So, some of the characteristics I said you know because we can generate with even very low current plasma. So, we can do it in a, a various uh, amperage with an extremely low amperage 15 amps that is called microplasma. We can still we can still get very good arc stability. It is used for welding very thin shades. The electronic components, for example, sensors, so, so filler elements, and uh, sometimes we also use microplasma to repair the already worn out parts by depositing with powder or with the wire. Okay, so in these applications, if you are repairing a large component. So, you cannot establish a good electrical circuit, right? So, how can you make entire component to electropositive, right? So, if you want to repair a small area in the component, so you can use a, a, a non transferred pilot arc and use a powder and locally you deposit and repair. Or you can also do it in the intermediate stage, commonly used to weld uh, uh, thicker sections uh, with high speed. Okay. And in this process, the another advantage also arc ignition when you are igniting the arc. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, sometimes you know when you are doing a short circuiting ignition, unknowingly if electrode uh, touch down and you have a problem because uh, then the tungsten can have short circuiting uh, leading to uh, tungsten inclusions. In this case, you always strike an arc in a non-transferred mode first, so arc is always on. Is it it? Okay. And we can also do it in high current mode, then you generate enormous arc in the energy density, the beam, and uh, we could get a penetration as high as 9 mm in, in, in steel. In a single pass, we can weld. Right? Okay, good. So, I, I mentioned about keyhole, right? So, keyhole is the one characteristic uh, uh, you always see when you are doing a power beam welding. For example, laser. So, when you are using laser or plasma, and you will have a, a complete penetration, and once you have a, a, a penetration made, liquid is formed, you start vaporizing the liquid metal. Okay? And when the liquid metal, once it forms, you also generate a vapor pressure. So, the vapor pressure and the plasma jet velocity, which you are actually sending towards the work pool, the vapor pressure. And then uh, you also have, when the vapor start escaping from the, the molten pool, you also have when a recoil pressure, it is like a rocket. Okay? So, when vapors are going up, it is also pushing, is not it? So, you have uh, all these three forces, the plasma jet which is coming from the plasma source and the vapor pressure which is pushing the molten pool and the recoil pressure which is actually going out from the vapor because when vapor goes out it also pushes. See all these pressures, the, the plasma, okay, vapor and then recoil would actually create a, a cavity. Okay? So, you create an, 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 a cavity surrounding the, the liquid pool. Okay? So, uh, this cavity generally it takes a shape of a keyhole. Sorry, this is not a. What is keyhole? It is like a door keyhole, right? Something like that. So, you love a molten pool and you make a, a, a sort of an, a keyhole, the door key, keyhole, right? So, and this is created because of. Uh, the plasma jet, vapor and recoil pressures. And when we are looking at laser welding, we will we'll see very in detail the keyhole formation mechanisms and the forces, force balances. Right now, we can assume that these three forces can also be generated with the plasma and this is sometimes beneficial because when you have to have an, a thicker section and you have a full penetration weld, so you need to form a keyhole. Okay, so, the keyhole and then stability of keyhole would determine the well characteristics. 
right? So that is what I want such keyhole I showed you in this picture. So you have a plasma and then yeah, so the vapor jet which is actually going out can create a recoil pressure and the vapor pressure will also push the boundaries of the keyhole to open up.